Hello and welcome, my triple chocolate fudge brownies with vanilla frosting. It's SJB here today, and all I want to do is talk to you guys a little bit about experience. I want you guys to kind of forget a lot of what you've known or have learned about experience, because um, the game is a bit different these days. The game, as we understand it, has been designed to get monkeys up to 5th tier, but now there's things like paragons in here, and what I want to do is I want to break this experience down for you guys, because it can get a little bit complicated. But there's some really simple formulas that if we know them, they make sense. I should also mention that every single number that I've gotten for you guys today has come in from me actually playing the game and getting this number, rather than looking it up online and figuring out that, uh, that number. So I did realize that these formulas are still the same as what the internet said, and I would appreciate if you guys would just press that like button for me for doing all that work for you. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the different types of experience. There's an experience that uh, your account actually gathers, and this is going to be your level. And eventually, if you get to the max level, you unlock a veteran level. And the second type of experience is going to be experience for different towers. And each one of these individual towers is going to gain a certain amount of experience that will basically just be kind of how much you use that tower. Uh, and specifically for things like Paragon Monkeys, you might want to make sure you have enough of that experience to actually unlock those guys. It's like 500,000 for the Dart Monkey. I think, I think I'm going to have 500k for the Boomerang, but it's a million for the Ninja, which means that we really need to play a pretty decent amount to actually unlock this guy, right? Well... Not if you understand how the game actually works. So, now that we've got that unlocked, let's go and uh, show you guys what kind of experience we're getting on just some regular maps. And the best way to understand this is with my super amazing, delicious graph. So this is my graph of experience that we gained from playing the game. All of this was done on beginner, but we played an easy, a deflation, a medium, a hard, an impoppable, and a chimps. And this is the amount of pops that we got for... Uh, or amount of experience that we got for playing these um, game modes. Now, it's pretty clear to me, if you look kind of closely, that playing easy doesn't get you that much experience. Playing deflation does not get you that much experience. Oh, playing hard, I mean, it's, it's about half of impoppable. I mean, not quite, but about half of impoppable. So it just really does seem like impoppable and chimps seems to be one of the fastest ways to earn experience, right? So as you guys probably know by now, it takes a certain amount of time to actually play these maps, right? So if we just say, hey, we earn more beating chimps than we do on easy, I mean, that makes sense. It takes a lot longer to play chimps than it does to beat easy. So what I decided to do was give you guys a graph of how much experience you earn per minute using these strategies. I guesstimated that it takes about five minutes for uh, easy, about five minutes for deflation, takes about eight minutes for medium, about 10 minutes for hard, and 15 minutes for impoppable and chimps. And this is the graph that we get now. We can earn about 15,000 experience per minute on impoppable and chimps. And if we want to do something a little bit easier, we can earn about 12k with hard, but then uh, medium just sort of tanks it off completely, though deflation is not a bad option if you want to just, you know, Earn 60 to 65% of your experience here by just pressing some buttons and then walking away. So that's another option for yourself as well. But if you actually want to play the game and beat the game and actually get better at the game, Impoppable and Chimps are probably your answer. Now, this doesn't explain everything because there's actually a little bit more of a nuanced weirdo thing that Ninja Kiwi decided to do. They said that beginner is obviously pretty easy. So playing an easy beginner map should not give you the same amount of experience as playing an expert easy map. So they decided to give us bonuses. If you start off with a beginner, you know, earning you, just as an example, 1,000 experience. Intermediate will give you 1,100. Advanced will give you 1,200. And expert will give you 1,300. There is a 10% bonus, a 20% bonus, and a 30% bonus um, from beginner all the way up to these harder maps. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to actually earn you more experience based on time, but at the same time they will technically give you more experience by playing these. So I don't really fully understand why Ninja Cube decided to do this. I guess it makes sense in their ad, but they changed the amount of experience you get based on how far you are in the game. And the basic way this is going to work is on round one you're going to start off by earning only 40 experience by beating round one. Um, every round in addition to that earns you 20 extra experience. For example, 40 
then 60, then 80, then 100, and so on, until you eventually get to round delicious round 21. It's such a weird round that they decided to make this be a thing, but on round 21, you start earning 40 experience per round. For example, 400, 440, 480, 520. And then, once you reach round 51, this one makes a little bit more sense, because this is like a nice middle ground round here, uh, we start earning 90 per round. So all these numbers obviously are just silly and don't really matter to any individual balloons player, but what this does mean is that as you go higher and higher rounds, you earn more and more experience. And obviously it means a bigger deal to beat round 100 and round 99 and round 98 than like the entirety of round 1 to 50. And that's why those rounds are so gosh darn important to get that experience on. Uh, it just gives you so, so much. So, so far we've kind of just bundled experience as experience. But what about experience on your towers? How does that actually work? Well, we want to unlock the Paragon Monkey. So in this example, we're going to try to unlock a Paragon Monkey. And uh, I've given you guys the amount of experience that you gain by playing the rounds, and the amount that you get for using towers is roughly equivalent. We're talking about roughly 230 or almost a quarter of a million experience for beating round 100 using only Dart Monkeys. Now, the way that experience is going to work is, again, a little bit weird, but it does actually make sense. The way that it's going to work is it's going to give you a certain amount of experience per round. For example, let's say it's 100. And it's going to split it up between all of the monkeys that you built on the screen. So if you've uh, spent $200 on a dart monkey, and $200 on a boomerang, and another $600 on a mortar, then you have a total of $1,000 spent on your towers. All right. 20% of the experience is going to go to the Dart Monkey for $200. 20% is going to go to the Boomerang because you spent $200. And then 60% is going to go to the Mortar because you spent $600. That does also include any sort of upgrade that you buy. So if you eventually just buy $1,000 worth of Dart Monkey and you only have, you know, uh, $500 worth of Dartling Guns, then you're going to have 66% of the experience go to the Dart Monkey and... 33% go to the Dartling Gun. So it's all based on percentages. Uh, they take the total experience and they just divide it amongst the towers on the screen. Um, as far as towers are concerned, uh, or as far as heroes are concerned, they do actually seem to matter from my testing. I don't exactly understand how it's going to matter, but for whatever reason, in my testing, I got different numbers any time that I used a hero. It was very slight, not very much, but it did seem to lessen the amount of experience that I got on a, uh, a monkey. That being said, it was very small, between 1% and like 8% for every single one of the times I did it. But again, I did do it multiple times, and it did seem to affect it. Not sure why. Uh, maybe somebody can explain it to me. Maybe it was an error in testing, but it did matter for my testing. So let's get down to the nitty-gritty. This is the real answer you guys want to know. How do you earn the fastest experience? Now that you understand kind of how experience is gained and how you get it, uh, let's go over the quickest ways to earn experience. The number one easiest way for almost a brand new player, especially somebody who doesn't have all the towers unlocked, is going to be deflation. Because deflation is going to allow you right away put some towers down and earn some experience. You can just throw down any tower you want, and you can throw them, throw them down in mass. Even if you only build one boomerang, though, we've already spent... 100% of our money on the 100% uh, uh, of our money on boomerangs, which means that the boomerang will get all of the experience. It does not matter how much money you spend on him, just that you spent uh, a larger percentage on him than something else. So you can build any tower that you want to, and just sort of earn experience really, really quickly. Again, this is a very, very good way to unlock um, uh, towers. Fourth tier, fifth tier. As a newer player, you're going to be rocking these in no time at all. Uh, but but if you're a reasonably experienced player who still just hasn't reached that million experience on a ninja or uh, the 500,000 experience you need for a dart monkey, then maybe you should think about doing some of these harder maps on Impoppable. These are going to be some of the main ways you're going to want to earn experience. I'm not saying that you should go and play literally the hardest map of the game, go to Expert, play Bloody Puddles or Ouch or Quad or something like that, and play it on chips, because that's going to be just too difficult for most players to pull off if you were doing that, you probably wouldn't need to watch this video right now. So I would say pick the hardest map that you feel comfortable with. You can pick a beginner map if you want. I mean, there's a lot of really easy beginner maps that'll just be easy for you. You could probably switch up to some intermediate maps like Balance um, and 
uh, firing range are both pretty easy maps that you could probably pull off, not in your sleep, but pretty easily on a poppable, just with some farms. But then if you can, I would say push it up to something like Cornfield, where you can just get an Ultra Jug and just literally own everything. So, uh, there's a couple ways that you can do it. Play the hardest map that's going to be comfortable for you, and you can earn about 250,000 experience per map that you play. That means that you can easily earn the uh, uh, Paragon Dart Monkey in just two impoppable games, or the Ninja Paragon in about four games. And to me, that seems pretty simple. That doesn't seem bad at all. That's way better than trying to play Deflation for 20 different maps and 20 different things. This is just going to earn you so much experience, and you're going to be ready to rock these Paragons in no time at all, guys. Alrighty, folks, the last thing I wanted to touch on really quick is just levels. Uh, obviously, if you level up quick, you're going to earn a lot of everything. You're, you know, monkey money, monkey, uh, uh, monkey knowledge, everything. It's just, it's, it's good to go up levels. So I was curious, how does the level function actually work? So I graphed out the levels as they go up, and this was the ridiculousness of Ninja Kiwi's, I don't know, function, graph, whatever it was. Uh, this is how you level up. It's pretty consistent all the way up until you get right about to round 100, or level 100, and then it just whoop! It shoots up all the way and makes it really difficult to level up. Uh, I guess it kind of makes sense because they want you to level up very quickly at first, but that weird little line there where it just goes straight up, just I thought was so weird. Um, nonetheless, once you reach level 155, you start earning veteran levels. And those veteran levels do take 20 million experience to go up, so there is a lot going on in a veteran level. But for a quick little idea on looking at this graph, there's a really fun little um, uh, approximation for you guys. At approximately 2 million pops, you will be level 50. At approximately 20 million pops, you'll be at level 100. And at approximately 200 million pops, you'll be the max level of level 155. So uh, that's kind of how Ninja Kiwi wanted to do it over here, but, you know, who am I to say what Ninja Kiwi wanted to do? If you guys enjoyed this kind of weird and in-depth um, experience video, make sure you press that like button for me. I know it's probably not everybody's favorite, but I wanted to explain it. I wanted to have some fun with this one because it really did take me a lot of math and experience and everything. And it's not the usual video for SJB. Uh, so it did take a lot of effort for me to make this for you guys. Probably a good six, eight hours to make this one with all that math and all that playing and actually getting those uh, numbers. Nonetheless, uh, Press that like button, and of course, have a super duper delicious day.